Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my lathe channel where I'm taking this beautiful old Swiss CNC lathe and updating it and modernizing it with Linux CNC. And this week, I'm mainly working on wiring. Right, wiring, wiring. To wire up the control cabinet, I'm trying to use as much of this uh, recycled wire as I can. It's kind of a mess, but hey, you may have noticed when I put this together, although I was given this three-phase breaker, which I really appreciate, uh, an electrician friend of mine pointed out that because this lathe is on a household power supply, uh, I've already got a ground, I don't know, GC, B, C, whatever, you know, in German, a FE, and also a 16 amp circuit breaker protecting the circuit in the house. And it's not actually per code to put a breaker behind a breaker. So this I'm not allowed to install. Thanks a lot for giving it to me, but I'm not allowed to use it. I've run the first couple of circuits already and then time lapse the rest of it because it'll get boring. I'm using 400 volt three phase power. And since the neutral is not switched, just run all of my neutrals through this block. The neutrals first, then do the earths and then start with the phases. I need to mount this analog control board and also this I.O. board. But unfortunately, I've been having some trouble connecting to my 3D printer. It's got one of these Duet Wi-Fi boards, but it's kind of hiding from me. Like I use the M552 command to interrogate it, to ask, you know, what IP address it's on. But even if I find that, I then type into the web interface, but it doesn't want to connect or communicate. Luckily, one of our generous patrons, Jörg, who lives locally, offered to print these for me. These are printed in PETG, but he also printed one in ABS. And they're all very, very nicely printed, but the one in ABS just looks amazing. Just how round those holes are. No elephant's foot, very, very nice uh, sides and stuff. Super impressed at the quality of his printing. Put these captive nuts in. Wiring reminds me of my very first real maintenance job on number 75 squadron after completing my aircraft mechanics training. Aircraft are pressurized by blowing compressed air into the cabin and then controlling the rate at which it can escape. That is done by the outflow valve. On the A4 Skyhawk, the outflow valve is next to the pilot's left hand ankle. My task was to replace it. And as you can imagine, even with the ejector seat removed, it is a very cramped, head down, ass up job with your shoulder wedged between the side panel structure and the cover over the depleted uranium bob weight at the bottom of the stick. Now aircraft have a lot of wiring and it gets bundled together in looms. There was one wire bundle about as big as your forearm right in front of the outflow valve that I had to work around. For wiring identification, I bought this set of numbers. Each string has got a hundred of these numbers on them. This wire is going to be my 24 volt plus DC wire. So it's number 61. You can sort of see the spring form. It's kind of cool. It fits over what a wide variety of wire sizes and clamps them reasonably well. existing ferrule on the end of this is too thick so let's chop it off. Since it took a few days to re complete the valve replacement I started having dreams about simply chopping out about a one foot section of that wiring loom, finishing the outflow valve replacement and then handing the nearest tweet which is what we called avionics technicians, the ch just handing over the chopped out section of harness and a work order with removed for access.
Right, so that's the power to the I.O. board. It needs two 24 volt inputs because this pin powers the outputs down here and this pin powers the outputs under here. The only other board that still needs uh, 24 volt power is this one. This is the analog output board which is going to control the motion to the analog drivers. So it needs 24 volt input power as well. So now with the bulk of the DC power supply done and distributed, the neutral is distributed, the earths are mostly connected. I'll now connect line one, then line two and line three. These terminal blocks can be jumpered. The jumpers come in a little bent plate like this. You just cut off as many as you need. In this case, three will be enough. Click them on and put screws in each of the holes. When I first did this with PVA glue, it was seeming like it might actually work, I just didn't put enough glue on, so it's, this time I've put more on. It's kind of cool how it just peels off, well mostly. Nah, it still doesn't get the gunge out of those deeper pockets though. So the three-phase power is going to be coming in from this main switch. So I'm going to leave the first terminal here free because that's where the power is going to come in. And I'll start connecting with the second one. And the first service that I'm connecting up here is the circuit breaker which will feed the VFD in the main spindle motor. And I've made a cable. This is the one that's going to take power from the main contactor, well from the terminal block of the main contactor, over across to the line reactor, which then feeds the VFD. I think I'm going to leave it there for this week. Uh, I've got most of the power wiring done, but wiring just takes a long time, huh? At least if you want to do it neatly and document what you're doing, it certainly takes ages. So that's it for this week. Thanks a lot for watching, and hopefully I'll have something more interesting next time.